All right, man. So you produce for Nev. Talk about your boy real quick, man. He yeah. said he said he gonna take the tag off and remake the beat. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I made a um song and it was like two people on the loop and they were both trying to ask for like it was like twelve thousand each. What? So how important is it to have like a personal relationship with the artist? I think that's the main thing. I always say like I'd be like, hey, bro, I have a oh, Waffle House, bro. If you say no. I have, I'm gonna get this. Nah, nah, Waffle House. Nah, nigga, nah, waffle nigga, waffle nigga House what? Waffle House, nigga, what, nigga? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Today we got Brody in the building. He pulled up on us all the way from Toronto. Yes, sir. Ski. We got Money Music and we got JB in the cut. It was good, bro. Yes, sir. All right, so for y'all that don't know, let's go through the credits real quick. I can't say all the Nav songs because he damn near produced all the Nav songs. So. <laughs> Nav whole catalog, bro did Lil Uzi Vert, Leaders, Offset and Money Bag, yo, Quavo, Take Off, Gucci, Young Thug, CEO Trail, the list go on and on and on and on. So, sure. how you feeling though? I'm blessed, brother. Just tapped in from Atlanta. Yeah, Just yeah. landed here today, came straight here. You know, tapping with the bros, yo. How many times you been to Atlanta? Two times, that's it. Two times? How you fuck with it? It's hard. It's hard. I'm just getting used to everything out here, you know? We eating Waffle House, shit like that, regular shit. But yeah, for sure. What's the main difference between Atlanta and Toronto? The culture is different. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like everyone out here is like, they cool with you. They see you wearing some shit. They be like, ah, like, mm -hmm. I see you putting that shit on. Like, they, they uplift everyone out here. You know what I mean? Toronto, Toronto's like that too. But it's like, I feel like out here, people put each other on more and more out here. You know what I mean? All right, man. So you produce for Nav. Talk about your boy real quick, man. He yeah. said he said he gonna take the tag off and remake the beat. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think bro was just saying that shit on some just like bro just saying some shit. He left Take Keith tag on the song. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't even think it was anything like that. He was really. a trolling. Bro, yeah, bro yeah, just, just, you know, bro just in the in the booth, <laughs> just like saying shit, you know what I mean? Like he he wouldn't do that shit though, for sure. Niggas don't even know <laughs> Nav be making beats. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Nav's hard. Yeah, have Nav be like, I'll make a beat again, and bro's like I ain't feeling that. Just come in and just got that. Nah, 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 nah. nah, but Nav, Nav hard, though. He be like, he know how to use FL Studio. He started on Logic, though. Mm -hmm. But now he on FL Studio. Um, But he's, like, crazy on making melodies. So he be making melodies. Sometimes I be adding drums to it. Shit like that. But, like, he know chords. He knows all that shit. Like, he fire. Shit hard. I ain't gonna count. I was listening to Nav, like, high school... Like 2017. SoundCloud days. Yeah, SoundCloud days for sure. Like, don't be so... This shit was hard. Sick. Who did that Bieber? That, that, that first shit he did with Travis Scott? He made that. That was him? Yeah, he made, he, that made whole, he made the whole beat and then he did the whole song with Travis. He went yeah. crazy. Niggas be sleep on, like, producer artists. Like, because sure. when you think of producer artists, nigga, they goats like Kanye. Travis was, is a producer. Facts. Nav. Or who else is a producer art? Russ. Mm -hmm. I think, like, producer artists, too, they're like... They're more picky though when it comes to their beats because yeah. they know. Like yeah. I'll be playing beats for Nav, and a regular artist who doesn't know anything about beats might just think it's hard because it's simple, you know. Mm -hmm. But he'd be like listening to it more and more because he knows how to make beats, so he's actually seeing it. You know what I'm trying to say? So mm -hmm. when I'm playing him a beat, so it's a little bit harder to work with people who know about beats and shit like that. But yeah, but right, this dude got I see how the Migos separated. Mm -hmm. He did Cold by Offset, and he did Us and Them. I mean, this, he basically got two songs with the Migos separated, bro. How, how, how the fuck that come about? <laughs> I actually met, I actually um, DM'd um, Offset like a year ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let me send you some beats. He just sent me his number. So I was just sending him beats, sending him beats, sending him beats. I ain't getting like no replies. Just like, I was sending beats for like six months straight. If you just look at my text, it's just like, like crazy. You just see a bunch of beats. I didn't even know if he was listening to them. Then he pulled up to Toronto and um, Cash, he told me to pull up to the studio and there was all of them there. All Migos was all there. So when I was there, Cash played some of my beats, some of my music. Quaver told me, yo, swing me a number, blah, 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 whatever. So when I started sending beats, that's how it just came about. Like, then Offset already had um, music on my, um, already had songs on my beats. Mm -hmm. And then Quavo and Takeoff just went on the beat that me and DJ Durrell cooked up that night. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how it went, really. Bro, it's hard, bro. Damn. I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with it. So let's go with some branding things real quick. So you said you DM'd Offset. Yeah. A lot of producers think you could just DM Offset and they'll get a response yeah, sure. type shit. What do you feel like is the difference between like a regular producer at home and your branding that you get a response and they don't? Mm -hmm. My thing is just stages. So it's like at the stage where I'm at and I'm like more outside and people are seeing, then I got verified on Instagram. It's like mm -hmm. maybe he might have seen the message, you know what I mean? But like back when I couldn't just message Offset or Quavo and they'll reply, I was just working with the people who are around me. 
it's like all the Toronto artists. Like I'm not sure if you guys know, but it's like Pressa, yeah, um, Pressa Kelly, hard as fuck. Pressa Kelly. Um, there's like this artist named YGs. They different YGs, different artists. Like all these artists in the city, I was working with all these guys, 88 Glam, I was working with them, and they were shouting my names out in the songs. So out in Toronto, like, my name was buzzing, you know what I mean? So I work with them first to get my name to a higher value where I can just DM people like Offset and shit because they see me outside with Nav and all these people. So I was going to say, like, what you getting verified, what song did you do? Like, what place in your career were you at where your profile got verified? Do you know exactly what happened? Bro, I literally just woke up and I seen that my shit was verified. Like that, I, was like, I was like, whoa. But like, my shit verified. I was like, whoa, damn, bro. But after, after what, though? Like, was it after you this, did hella placements? Recent, or just... Yeah, this was probably like eight months ago. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. But it's like, it's like I had placements out. Like, I had placements on, like, when me and Nav, when it's first, I had placement. I did 14 songs on there. So I had, I had music coming out. You know what I mean? But, and I was trying to get verified. There's like a section on Instagram where you can request to get verified. But that shit was declining. That shit, like, they wouldn't even... Until one day I just woke up in the morning and shit was just verified. So I don't know if it came from the songs I produced. I don't know what it was that sparked it. But I just woke up, shit was there. Because that shit kind of verify you as a person. Because then yeah. that shit weird. It separates. But some people be buying verifications too now. Like They have like 1,000 followers. Like The shit be verified. You know what I mean? But you could, you, you could be able to tell. You could be hey, able to tell, hey, like... The, the like ratio. Niggas be having, like... Yeah. You, know what I'm you, you could be able to tell, like, who's real, who's not, just by the content you see. If they're outside, if, who, who they're working with, shit like that. How do you feel, like... What can you get to producers as far as, like, your brand on IG? Because, you know, a lot of producers might have, like, no profile picture. Or they might just post, like, a a beat with, like, Southside nah, on that yeah, shit. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. I look at your page, you kind of give me, like, a like an artist. Like, you For move sure. like an artist. You For feel sure. Me? But I feel like everyone has different personalities. So like my personality, I feel like I post pictures. That's that's me. Like I put clothes on, put drip on, mm-hmm. post pictures, post that I'm outside with Nav, post whoever I'm around, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like everyone's different though. So it's like like as a producer coming up, I feel like posting that south side and shit like that, they have to make their page more like appealing. So when you look at it, you actually wanna fuck with them and work with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm you know what I'm trying to say? Like mm-hmm. Where it's like sometimes they're just posting their beats, but you don't see their face or there's not a face to the to the brand, then you don't really see who they are. But regardless, I think if you're making fire songs though, like you can go up because there's like people like Q Beats, they don't post shit of their face. It's just straight mm. song after song after song. Like you see cover after cover after cover of like every album they're on. So it's like it just depends who you are as a person, really. Like the route you're trying to go in, really. Uh, I feel like we definitely, like, over the, the time, of, like, you have to... It's still important to be there and be in the motion, but, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a pathway now where, like, bro, there's so many producers winning out the country right now. You feel me? Someone's in, like, fucking, I don't know, Europe somewhere on the Bo- island Bo- with, Bo- with Bo- a goat farm. Uh, I'm going God. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but even if you know uh, OZ Music, uh-huh. he's from, like, Germany or uh, I'm not sure where, where he's from, like, Switzerland or whatever. Mm-hmm. And bro, bro has hits with Drake and everyone. And I heard that I heard that he just got all that shit just from sending it through, emailing it through, sending it through to people. So he wasn't even really around this shit. There's like people everywhere around the world. Palace. Yeah, the world. facts. Palace. They be moving. Palace be everywhere in Mekong Island. I be like, what the hell you doing out here? How you even know him? You feel me? Like, <laughs> but that just shows me too though that like wherever you are in the world, you can you can do it too though. Like, you just gotta make a way for sure. So do you think that okay? Producers always be like, I'm somewhere where nobody does this. I'm somewhere where I don't have studios in my hometown. Do you think that's just an excuse? Yeah, that's excuse. I feel like that's an excuse. Because right? now we have social media. So it's like, all you really need is a computer and headphones, an FL studio, or whatever doll you use. And you could send that shit out. You can make connections. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then I feel like people are saying like, oh, I'm in this city with, not a lot of people or not a lot of artists there, I think it's like you can make it work wherever you are. Even I know, so Murder Beats is from like where I'm from, but he's from like the part where it's like probably like 30,000 people, small place close to Buffalo, it's called Niagara, right? But he made a way. So I feel like, you know what I mean? You could just really connect wherever. Shout out Ant Chamberlain. He be using, he be just be having a little small speaker set up, laptop, little lab MIDI keyboard. Facts. You don't even need a big ass studio. You really don't need you a brand. You, you don't need you, you, know you, don't, you don't need a big ass studio for sure. You just need even some headphones and a and a and a mouse and a 
in a computer. That's yeah. it. You're good. Well, you can use the, the keyboard on the computer yeah. as a MIDI. When we be moving around, like, I told you guys, we go on a meet and greets, shit like that. I really just have a, uh, a JBL speaker. I just pull that shit out. Boom. I'm good. I have my laptop right here. I'm cooking up. So, so I feel like you, you, can, you don't need too much. You don't need a big-ass studio, really. Okay, so, but you still need to kind of, like, portray it. If you're not in the area, you're on social media, so you still need the content, though. It needs to look like you outside, right? Like, True. But I feel like in the beginning, I wasn't posting pictures of me in big studios. I was never in big studios until, like, later on when I started getting some placements, when I started pulling up on people. Before that, I just had, like, KRKs right here. You were just and showing just them worked. your series. Yeah. yeah. And I was just maybe, I'm maybe just posting some pictures of myself, really. So, like, let's talk about networking. Like, networking when you're not, you're miles away from the city, you feel me? Like, what are red flags you see producers now in the DMs that's like, bro, you fucking up your chance? Just talking about the business right away. Mm. Talking about be like, business. Producers be talking about, sometimes they be talking about business, like, oh, and then we're going to split it like this or send me loops and the, and the loops say, if you use this loop, it's going to be blah, 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 blah. Like, it's all good. Like, we, we don't even need to think about that. Too. It doesn't need to go that far right now. It should just be about creating music. Feel me? <laughs> like, you don't even need to talk about the business right away. Like, All right, so, so how about this? Like, I feel like producers don't know. Because yeah. I, I, I'm going to be real. We have people that come on the podcast and they say, you need to talk about the business first. And then we have people that come and say, bro, let's get the music. The business will come later. Because it's always two perspectives. So, like, how, how should the, when, when should the business, like, come about? You feel me? I feel like if the song's actually going to come out, mm -hmm. I have mad placement song never comes out. I have, I have placements with, like, with like mad artists and they and like there's no even point about talking to the business with the producer because the song is not even going to come out it's just like tucked in the unreleased folder you feel me so it's like maybe when you're working with upcoming artists though and they want some beats from you you go like you talk about the business you know what I'm trying to say like mm. oh this is how much I'm going to charge you mm. but it's like I feel like for producers it's like it's like I don't think I'm going to go and run off with your beat because the shit has to get cleared, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to that point, we'll talk about the business for sure. And, you know, just do fair business, whatever it is. Like that kind of Somebody told me this shit. They said, number one rule is to not talk about business. Yeah. Like, what the... And I said, yeah. nah, that's what... I, I, I be in like, studios, oh, bro. Shit, I be I in studios. I be in studios and it's like, you're cooking up with a producer, you vibe, and you're like, oh, so, bro, how are we going to split this? It's just like, <laughs> like, we're just making music for fun. Like, that's me. Like, I'm making music for fun because I love this shit. Like, if it goes somewhere, it's going to go somewhere. If it gets a placement, then we'll talk about the shit. You know what I mean? But up until then, I don't feel like you should be in a studio with a producer like while you're making a beat with a producer and be like, okay, how are we going to split this? Because the beat might not even go anywhere. So why I think people... Okay, so we so Southside did this interview with um Million Dollar Worth of Game and somebody asked him, he was like, uh, if you're in the studio, do you pull out a split sheet? Southside was like, man, you goofy, you pull out a split sheet, we gonna God. kick your ass out. God. And everybody in the comments was like, this was wrong with the music business, it's fucked up, da 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 da. So like, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know, I'll be real. No, I but I feel, like, know, I feel like those people don't realize what like studio sessions actually are. Like, when you walk into a studio session, shit's supposed to be, feel like, not like family, but it's just like, it's like welcoming, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna cook up with this person, like, you cook up with Weezy and you're like, okay, how are we going to split it? He's going to look at you like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, you're kind of looking at him like a price tag when you like, say that yeah, shit. That, like, then you're just like, I'm look getting at, paid right now. Yeah, but like, if you're just vibing and we cooking up, like, oh, let me add something to the beat. Let me add something to the beat. Like, you guys are collabing. You guys fucking with each other. You're not even worried about that. You're just really uh, making beats. You're just vibing with each other. Just enjoying the moment, really. Mm -hmm. And when the shit comes down to it, oh, guess place? All right, say that. This is what's happening. Oh, connect your lawyer. Connect whatever your people and handle it. I really don't even like talking about business with producers. I don't even like want to talk Thanks. to them. Thank I really you. just want to keep this shit really like, all right, we, we just make music and we cool. Like we don't need to talk about the business. You have your people for that. I have my people for that. You guys talk about that. Sell it. Sell it advice. Yeah, that's fair. Unless so. they go and try to, when the business comes out, they're trying to tax the artists and shit and then the artist's calling me saying, well, why is this guy trying to charge blah, blah, blah for a loop? You know what I mean? Then it's like, then I might need to call the producer and be like, bro, you got to clear you have song. You had those problems before? Yeah, I have. Recently. Where it's like, I made a, I made a um, song and it was like two people on the loop and they were both trying to ask for like, it was like 12,000 each. What? Yeah. And it's like some artist's budget, it, that budget ain't like, it's not that big. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's just like, when he's seen that and I, it looks bad on me because I'm the person who actually got the placement. I'm the one who has a relationship with the artist. You know what I mean? 
So it's like the artist is going to really look at me as in like, yo, what's going on? So then I had to call up them and be like, come on, bro. Like, you guys can't be, you know what I'm trying to say? Everyone got to eat. Everyone got to eat. Don't get me wrong. Everyone got to eat. But like, prices like that is like crazy. We mean, we might need to start sending some more loots out. I ain't know niggas is getting fees for like that for loose. You can No, it's not. You, you're not. What you're you not mean? though. Like, that's what I'm saying. When they, when they try to charge that much, it was just like, it's crazy. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm saying, are some producers actually getting like paid up front for like the for loops? loops? Yeah. yeah, for sure. I'm saying that much though. No, no, not that much though. Not that much. Not that much. And it was like the first kid's first placement. He tried to ask for it like twelve thousand. Nah. Man, I ain't trying to like get on the sample makers, man. I love the sample makers, nah. but like, just just run me through like a blueprint you think it should be. Like when you're a producer or sample maker, work working your way up. Nah. Like, how should it be when you're asking for that advance, or asking for that price? Like, you go for the big price or, like, like you know what I'm saying? Just... Now, I think, like, whatever is fair, bro. Like, even the sample makers, they make, like, a fire part of the song for sure. I use loops all the time. I make loops. So I, I know it. But, like, at a certain point, too, it's just, like, you can't get too greedy where you're asking for, like, too much where the artist doesn't even have that budget. Mm -hmm. And then when they're trying to clear it, it's going to look bad on the people who actually have the relationship with the artist, you know what I mean? It's not really going to look bad on the loop maker. It's going to look bad on the producer who's like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, who has a relationship with the artist? So I feel like, like, when they're worried about, like, you said what to ask for? I feel like, yeah, you can ask for something, but if the artist, like, if they don't have the budget for it, like, you still compromise and you guys meet in the middle or something, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Don't sell yourself short, but, like, don't get too greedy to the point where it's just like, you know what I mean? Especially if it's like you ain't have no placements before ever and it's like your first time getting a placement you're trying to ask for some crazy shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But everyone got to eat though, for sure. Yeah, we always be talking about the sample making shit. I'm going to tell y'all like I told y'all in the last interview, man. Just go watch the London J interview. He broke that shit down to the team when he was talking about the teamwork and shit like that. Yeah, it's just teamwork at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's just teamwork. Got to split it. Everyone got to eat, for sure. All right, man. So let's talk about this. You're from Toronto. Guess how old this nigga is. How old is? Guess. 22? See? What? 22? <laughs> nah, cause I know, I know young, it's, it's a young nigga's time right now. Yeah. I, I know, trust me. When I when I told him I'm 22, he just started dying laughing. Like, bro, you look old as fuck. He said, I look I, old. Like, <laughs> like, I just told me about surprise, bro. Yeah. Bro, look older. I was like, no, like, yeah. nigga said 22. Yeah. I looked, that shit. Like, what? I feel like that yeah. age of being between like 21 and 24, like, we lit right now. Yeah, for sure. We really can just all sprout. Good. For sure, it's no new not even 21 and 24, bro. There's like kids 16. You're right, you're right. Which I feel like, like is the prime 17. for producers. Like, the prime? The prime. Age? Like the prime. Like, you know, like like when you're in your like 27 to 30. You I, know, feel like probably, I feel like, like 30. I feel like, I think like 30s for sure. Bro, what? Because like, 30s. okay, boom. You got to experience Bezo, some. Parker. There's a lot of producers in there. Yeah. Like, we we'll talk to an interview and they'd be like, they're about to hit their 30s in their 30s. I'm like, damn, you're going crazy yeah. right now. It, it, like, you know late, late, like late 20s, 27, 28. Yeah, like, that's how like, 27, 28. Like, then you got niggas like Jacob, who fucking our age. He just sprouted. Got, but Jacob, he been working for, Jacob, yeah. been, I'm going to see him do that since 14, though, type shit, 13. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he yeah, been yeah. at it. So he. But this might not even, like, Jacob's in his prime right now, but his shit might even go bigger yeah, he might than go, that. He might go more turn. When he's, like, 26. Yeah. Shit. You know what's crazy, man? Yesterday, I boosted you now. Yesterday, I was, um, I forgot how I came about this shit. I think I looked at a meme or something. Or I was just listening to old music, and then I came upon, like, Future and Rocco. Like, Uno and them old songs. Mm -hmm. And then I just started watching, like, all the Future music videos from, like, 2012 all the way up to, like, now. And I'm like, bro, just the... Evolving your sound oh, and God. shit, you know what I'm saying? And like people want to see growth too. Yeah, yeah. People don't even want to see you like come out and you you have everything right away. Like people mm -hmm. actually want to see you start from nothing and go up. That's what like fans love to see. I feel like everybody has this this thing that holds them back from putting their shit out because yeah. they are, they want everybody to see them yeah. in the image they want them to see them. But yeah, we like, already see you, so just bring it out. We already know you. We already know. And that's you why even now. even. Your day one fans are gonna love that. Oh, I, I I seen him when he had nothing. You know what I mean? They they brag about that shit. Oh, I I seen this artist when he had nothing. Like, everyone wants to like say that. Like, remember he had that shitty ass camera. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I remember when uh he dropped that album. But it was so many niggas on my store. I was listening to you yeah. when it was 12k. Facts. Nigga. I was like, Facts. I want some money for that or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the fans actually want to see it. But like, imagine you come out and you already like you have all the drip. You have the. Uh, the best cameraman. This like I feel like people want to see the growth too. Like you have to leave room for growth. They don't, yeah, they don't believe yeah. you more. Yeah, 
they want to see room for growth, like where you came from, where you started from, like where you at. You know what I mean? Straight up. Talk about like you growing up in Toronto and like what's that like? Oh, uh, that's cool. It's like there's like a scene there right now, but it hasn't like fully blown up. Like there's like Drake, Tory Lanez, Weekend, Nav. We got like those artists that are that are that are big. You know what I mean? But there's like an underground scene right now. Like Smiley. I don't know if you guys know Smiley. He did a song with Drake. Over the top. I don't know if you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, Pressa. Like, there's these artists in the city right now that are doovy. These guys are doing their thing right now, but they're not on your guys' radar right now. But it's like, so the scene out there is like, it's fire. Like, so I would just be straight up, bro, about this question. Like, what? It's something in the air over there that just makes y'all niggas crazy. Like, every producer from there crazy. Like, you Eastbound. Yeah. Then you got yeah. the artist Drake, Tory Lanez. Like Tory Lanez is a very underrated artist. Even though he's big, he's still underrated to me. Wonder Girl, like. Boy Wonder. Wonder Girl, yeah. Boy, Boy Wonder. Wonder. Boy Wonder's hard, bro. Who else from Toronto? I know, uh, I know a producer named Deadin. Bro, is Nami from Canada, bro? It sounds Who's familiar. That? The producer. Um, what's the What's the other dude named uh, T Two? T minus. T minus. You know what T Two baseline is? Is he from? Mm, I don't know what that is. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know what it is? But more of the story is, bro. Like, what's in the air? Maybe it's just <laughs> maybe it's not even in the air, bro. Maybe Show just, me the air, bro. It's just it's just the vibes out there, bro. It's like when if you haven't been there, when you guys pull up, it's like a different type of vibe. You know what I mean? It's like just that sound. OVO forty. He's from Toronto too. Like, yeah, saying, all, like, like that sound, bro. You know what I mean? I'll be on live, like doing beat critiques, and the nigga see me be on like, bro, this shit hard, and then he'll be y'all from Toronto. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's like Toronto, Canada, and then if you're from like Germany or somewhere, you're just. Fire. I feel like maybe maybe because it's like. Over here, we're probably less musically inclined because we're kind of like on some microwave music shit. Nah, you know what I'm right. saying? Like America. I, but like, I, I feel like for my sound and like some artists around, I feel like we look at Atlanta sound like that shit's crazy. You know what I mean? Because like it has different type of drip to it. Yeah. Whereas like Canadian sound, like it's still fire too, though. Still I mean, fire, int- I like, want to say less musically talented. I'm talking about instrumentation wise. I want to say that though. I just say that's that's kind of like in the like a Pacific genre. I just feel like maybe because like you're just out the loop and you have your own type of culture and stuff. Yeah, you're it. You know what I'm saying? It's like Implanting. your guys' culture yeah. out here is different. So when you come to like, Toronto, it's gonna be different too. And then like another area, different is sounds. Be, yeah. New York is different. You go mm-hmm. to New York, people are talking different. How they're dancing is different. In the like everywhere has different type of culture. You know what I mean? So when did you start like making beats and stuff? Um, when I was 15. And then I started making beats when I was 15. Um, 22 now, so like seven years. Oh, that's and fucking then, crazy. So you you were 17 producing that shit? Yeah, 17. The story the story's crazy, though, because when I was 15 and I wanted to start making uh, music, I seen Nav's page. He had 500 followers. And he would just, like, post, like, a video of, like, you know what I'm trying to say? The speakers, like, beats playing. I'm like, yo, what is that? Like, how do you do that? You know what I mean? He's just like, oh, just get, um, he said, Logic. You know, regular shit, get a MIDI keyboard. Like, you know, just the basics. You tell the uh, producer what to start. So I, I went and I got that shit and then, when I got that, he ended up blowing up. Like then he started going on OVO Sound Radio. So, then with Travis, so shit went to like hundred thousand followers. So he was gone. You know what I mean? Then I started working in the city. I got like all these upcoming artists saying my name and shit in the song, and then Nav remembered me. So it was like crazy. Like the first person I ever messaged was like the person I actually like ended up working with like forever. You know what I mean? It's crazy. That's right. So when you was making beats, like what was your learning process like? And then what producers inspired you at the time? Learning process of watching mad YouTube tutorials, bro. That's it. Like, yeah. Now there's way more, but like back then there wasn't as many, but there still was busy works beats type yeah, shit. Hey, yeah. Like 2017 internet that's... money tutorials running that yeah. shit. Man. Went crazy. 2017? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, 2017. I thought like they did one of the best jobs with this. Yeah, shit. They, yeah. they ran that when, 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 when internet money started, bro, like that when you got mad information, like keyboard yeah. shortcuts, all type of shit I learned. I was like, whoa, like I didn't even know this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like how to make melodies. Stuff like that. For sure. So to kind of talk about like... Oh, but who inspired me is Metro, for sure. Metro. Metro. Hey, Especially yeah. 2017, nigga. Metro was... Bad. Metro, Southside. Yeah, y'all was watching the vlogs and for shit. For sure. Those vlogs, for sure. Cook up. Man, what's the most legendary producer vlog? The one of him and cooking up with the... You know what I'm talking about with the with the camera just like right here, you're just sitting there cooking up? Which one? The, the, the first one or the second one? Yeah, black and white. Yeah. But oh, then yeah. there's the first one too. That one's the first hard. One, yeah. That one's just legendary, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm feel I ain't gonna count the goddamn when they was doing that record with Travis. Oh, oh that was that shit was crazy, that's man. Fire. The Skyfall record? Yeah, yeah, man. That was crazy, that's that's crazy man. 
That's the most legendary footage I've ever seen. That's right. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's the hardest for sure. You ain't never ain't got no live vlogs. You ain't got no vlogs. You trying to put out anything like behind the scenes? I be, I be trying to do it now though. Like mm-hmm. just trying to show people behind the scenes and I'll bring my cameraman and shit like that and show behind the scenes because Nav's like more private. Like uh, EXO, they're like, like even the weekend, like their brand is like private. You know what I mean? But it's like now I'm just trying to show behind the scenes and type shit like that and show like Nav, like, you know, like this is what the kids really want to see. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Nav's older too. So he's just like, yeah, he's on board with it. But it's just like, yeah, so. I'm about to just start releasing some shit. So you started making beats at 15. How long you think it took you until you was like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm fine with this shit. You feel me? But I still feel like I'm learning right now. To this day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It's like, I don't even, like, I feel like, yeah, now, like, when I'm getting more and more placements with different artists, I'm saying, like, okay, okay, I'm actually fired at this shit, you know? But when did you feel like you was comfortable to, like, start sending beats out, basically? From the second I started, bro. Oh, for I was, real? I was, <laughs> I was sending all my beats out, bro. Even they sounded like trash. You know, when you l- listen to your old beats? Yeah, you're uh-huh. like, damn. Like, they're like, yo, this is, this is shit, you know? But, like, I was still sending those out. And that still was landing some placements with, like, upcoming artists in the city. So, like, I was just doing, I was always just sending my beats. I was never scared, like, oh, if someone steals it or someone, like, doesn't give me credit. I was just like, if someone does, I'm going to just charge it to the game in the beginning. Like, I got to do what I got to do to get my name out there. You know what I mean? mm I was even like not even taking money from artists in the beginning. I just wanted them to like, okay, put my name in the YouTube title, put it in the description, like, you know, tag me when you post it on Instagram in the beginning. I wasn't even worried about the money. Like, what was the first like project you did with Nev? Bad Habits. Bad Habits, okay. That's, that's, and that's when I came out, I did 14 songs on mm-hmm. his album. That's the one with no debate? No, nah, that's good intention. That's, that's the next intention. one. That's okay. Next one, yeah. So talk about like Bad Habits, like the process of making it. Was just locked in in Toronto. We were just in the studio, locked in for like like two years, I'd say. And this is my first time coming around this shit. That's like I, I met like mad people. Like this, I was like I was surprised. Like I met Weekend, Metro came to the studio. Like this shit just opened my eyes. I was just young. I was like seventeen years old that time. So I was just surprised. Just like process, really, just like go to the studio, cook up, eat food, vibe out. You know, what I'm trying to say regular shit. PS Five. Like I was just it was just regular shit. That's how we were making the project, really. So what was, like, the biggest, like, the first biggest, biggest record that, like, oh, shit, this is crazy? I would say, um, like, No The Bass, one of them, where I think, like, that shit was hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, because I, cause I made that with Wheezy, too. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that was, like, that was, like, one of those records where I was, like, okay, okay, like, that was this shit fire. But I was, I've been had little placements even before that on Nav's album, on Young Thug's album, too. But I feel like that song, though, was, like, okay, this shit's trim, like. Talk about that, like, that whole vibe. We were at the studio in Toronto, and Cash, Nav, Young Thug, Wheezy, they're all there. So I pulled up to the studio, and, like, they basically just said, yo, yo, cook some shit up. So I just went, bro. I was just, like, I just opened my computer, bro. I just remember, that. Like, I was like, damn, bro, like, Wheezy's right beside me. I just started cooking up some shit. Wheezy's like, yo, this is fire. Wheezy went, flipped the shit. He made it sound crazy. Just, like, turned up the tempo. They're crazy, like... Crazy drum pattern. If you listen to the, if you listen to the beat, you'll understand what I'm saying. Like the drum pattern is not like regular shit that you hear. You know what I mean? And then Doug was like, "That's hard." Doug started mumbling some shit in the studio, and I've just took that flow, and just added his bars to it, and just like that's how it came about, really. But especially from my first time as a kid, like with Young Thug, Cash, Nav in the studio, it's like it's pressure. You know, you feel it. But like when you perform, it's just like it's crazy. Yeah. So like, what's your mentality like? Being so young and actually being, like, in the motion, you feel me? Like, what type of mentality do you have to have at that age? Just, like, grind. It's, like, I'm not even, like, I don't really care about the partying and all this other type shit. I'm just here to work. You feel me? Like, that's really it. So it's, like, that's really my mentality. It's, like, I don't care about all the other bullshit. I'm just here to work, really. Like, it's on my grind type shit. So when you got that first, like, big placement bag, like, what did, what did like, you do with the money type shit? Bro, I didn't spend none. I... I racked up my money. I had my money saved for mad time. I didn't buy nothing, no like, expensive clothes, no, no, like maybe I bought a computer, mm-hmm. you know? And then when I got that, I keep stacking my money. Then I invested my money into a, um, into a house, into a property. Mm-hmm. That made money for me because then I sold it. Which I, now it's like, I'm at a point where it's like, last like two years, like I've been like buying some more and more shit, get a car, you know what I mean? Get, buy some drip type shit like that. Mm-hmm. Invest, just invest in my craft too, like just to move around. Like, mm-hmm. Really, that's the main thing. Before I'm even spending money on all other type of shit, like money that I have so I can move around, pull up to Atlanta, 
pull up to LA. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, so going back to like the process of when you're making songs and stuff, like what's diff what's different between like a producer just sending a beat, but you're actually like in the room, executive producing 14 songs on the album with Nav. Like what what what's like different as far as the process? You just see the artist vibe. Like you see like when they come in, if they're happy, they turned up, if they like what type of beats they want to go on. That's like harder to see when you're like texting beats. You'll be sending beats out and they might be in like a sad mood type shit. Some shit might have just happened at home type shit and they want to rap about it and you just send them straight trap beats. You know what I mean? So that's the one thing I feel like the difference is when you're when you're with the artist and you get like that in person vibe. Like how you see that Metro Skyfall, you could yeah. tell their vibe into the shit. It's like that's the one thing that's different. It's like when you just text in beats. But I got placements off of sending beats out too though. For sure. Talk about like the relationship with you and Weezy. How did that come about? Um, that just came about with like XO YSL, they they have like the thing they're they're mad tapped in with each other. Mm-hmm. Nav Dog, Nav Gunner, like they're close. So it's like Weezy's even up there too. So it's like when I started coming around, Weezy would be at the studio. And like if you're fucking with the shit, you just be working. So the more and more I just like see Weezy, the more and more the relationship builds. That's even with like Taurus too. Like I'd be seeing Taurus and like the more and more we see each other, the more the relationship builds. You mm-hmm. feel me? Where it's like in the beginning, it was just like I wasn't even saying too much. I was just like, you know, when I meet him, just like, what up? That's it. But like the more, the more I see him, just like the more relationship builds and that's it really. We even on this last project we did on um, mismatch me and Weezy with Babyface Ray and Nav, like that's just like, like that was a hard record too. Did you work on that project um, that Weezy and Nav did too? No, I never did that one. For real, that, that was, was all Weezy. That was just all Weezy. All Weezy was just locked in. I think I was in Toronto while they were doing it in LA. I think that was some quick shit. They just started. They're like, all right, yo, we, we're gonna release this. And I think they did it in like one month. And For I was real? just in Toronto. Yeah. Mm. I think they did that shit in one month, I think so. I feel like that project was hard as fuck. That's that project was hard. Man. The beats on His that flows, shit was crazy. The beats, that shit was like top Facts. crazy. So talk about like you and Weezy, like kind of like, I don't know, y'all, I don't want to say mentality, but like process when y'all make it sound because y'all really pushing the sound right now. It's not like y'all got them just sitting in one place with the sound or you feel me doing some other shit. Like I really like nah, changing this shit. He's pushing the sound like crazy. Though. You like, in too with the that's, that's like, he's just like, I look up to him. He's like, I'm studying from him because he's a GOAT, bro. Like, I'm still learning from these type of, like, these producers. Like, I'll be sitting back watching him. Like, when he was in Toronto, he's in the studio. I'm just, like, sitting there. I'm just like, bro, can I just sit and watch? But he real too. He'll just be like, yo, pull up. Come make a beat with me. You know what I mean? Like, I'll add to this beat. And then we go in the studio with Nav. He's going to play those beats first, for sure, for Nav. You know what I mean? That's hard. So talk about you, like, signing the um, Cash XO. That's what yeah, yeah, Cash yeah. Um, like, I'll just be around Nav. So he just like, he'd just be seeing like I'd be producing mad shit. Then I started working with Got It, with Keed and all of them, and he's close with them. So he's just like, he's just like, it only made sense. He's just like, yo, pull up. Like, you know, come sign with the gang. You know what I mean? So it's a blessing. Like, he's one of the biggest managers in the game. He'd be fucking with like Thug. Basically, every, every, every artist. He have relationships with every artist. So I was like, yo, makes sense. You know what I mean? He can get my beats to everyone too. And we just been cool for so long. So it's just a blessing, really. So what's some like advice you can give the producers that are looking for managers? Don't rush. <clears throat> like, I feel like it's gonna come. It's gonna like I didn't have no manager until one year ago, and I had mad placements before that. Like I was just doing everything myself. I just had a lawyer. I was doing mad shit myself. I feel like I could even do all this. I could do a lot of things myself too. But it's like it's better when you have a team too. It's a little easier. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I feel like I feel like when you need to focus on having a manager, it's like like the work's coming in. And you actually need someone to deal with that. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Or or someone who can bring value to your career. Then, like, if you fire and, like, a manager sees you and you fire and he, he wants to sign you and he can send your beast to this artist, that artist, blah, blah, blah. Then I think, like, that would be hard, too, like, to sign. So going back to, like, Nev, I wanted to ask this earlier, but I forgot. Like, what, what makes y'all think, like, what do y'all think, why people like gravitate to Nav so much? Cause even like rappers, like they really fuck. I like this nigga really be tapped in. You feel me? Like be like, cause he just don't do too much. He just be chilling. Nothing. Yeah, his, vo- his voice, his swag, it's real. Like he don't got to try. And it's not, not even not even about the rap though. It's just about like how who you are as a person. I feel like that takes you even further too. That's what I feel. Cause I, cause like now we in a time now where it's like I ain't throwing no this and no rappers, but like you gotta have some type of drama to really stay relevant yeah. or like some like some baby mama drama yeah. just out of jail. Facts, <laughs> facts, facts. Yeah. But now just 
Then now, chilling and he's still like relevant. You feel and me? He's, and he stands on that type of shit too. Though, like, bro, I don't want to get involved in any of that shit. Like, blah blah blah. If someone says this and that on Instagram, he doesn't even care to go and reply to it. He just really chill. He just doesn't. He just wants to stay away from the bullshit. Mm-hmm. So back to even when you said about the vlogs, like, do I show behind the scenes? It's like he's not even really like, like he's just mad private. He just really just wants to make his music and that's it. Put the music out, let the fans eat and just go back to regular life. He's just normal. It's crazy because niggas would get, like, fans would get obsessed with that shit when you're so private. It's like, what the fuck is you doing? Yeah, facts. Like, even when he came out, he never showed his face for, like, the first year of his career. And everyone was like, yo, who is this? Like, who's that rapping? So you're on tour with Nav right now. Like, talk about tour experience. Like, what is that like? Yeah, it's meet and greet tour. It's like, um, mm-hmm. not show tour, but just it's, it's cool. It's just like... Like, it's really just building. He's just my boy now at this point. You know what I'm trying to say? We're just doing regular shit. Go eat, <clears throat> tap in with people, um, meet different type of artists, type shit like that. It's, it's just like on the road. It's just cool. It's just like living life. You know what I mean? It's just a blessing, really. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just like living life, though. It's just like if you wait your boy and you guys going state to state. You know what I mean? That's all it is. So we asked Turbo. We didn't ask Funny Digital this, but we asked Turbo, like, what's your craziest tour experience? But... Like, what's your craziest, like, studio or just being outside experience when it comes to this industry shit? I know you didn't see so. <laughs> That question, um... They got to, like, get into detail. Like, you know, you, you got to get the most toxic one, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, bro. They'd just they be crazy shit happening all the time, bro. Like, they'd be just crazy shit when you go outside. You'd be seeing shit, you know what I mean? Like, I can't even talk about certain shit. You so, know? like, so you know let me like, ask you this. Like, how do you move as a person? Because, you know, we just seen the shit with P&B Rock. It's like, damn, you feel me? Like Facts. Like, I don't know, just not posting everywhere you are, really. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're with artists. I feel like these like these guys are targets. Like, I don't even think people talk about it so much. But, like, having a career like that is, like, you a big target, bro. You know what I mean? So it's just, like, how I move is just, like, not posting where we are type shit. Or posting when we leave. Not giving everyone your address where you at, you know what I mean? Or like not wearing your jewelry, going to like spots that you don't, you know, anything you don't really need to do, don't do it. Or it's like if, or if you, if you need to go out somewhere and you don't need to rock your jewelry or whatever and you're by yourself, it's not even about like people say, oh, it's moving pussy type shit, but it's not even like that. It's just moving smart. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like if you're by yourself and you don't have the right type of people or you go into cities, you don't even know who's there. It's just like really moving smart, really like. So I feel like that's, that's how I move. Or anyone who I'm with, like, if I go to a restaurant, or we go to a restaurant, we have the car waiting for us. Right when we about to leave, we go in the car, we leave. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's just like, just moving smart, really. But, yeah, rest in peace, P&B, though. That shit crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know. Like, you so always, it's a rapper every year type shit. Like. But it's like, stuff like that is like little mistakes, though. You you might not even be thinking sometimes. That's a crazy mm-hmm. thing. Like, you might post something and not even think. One thing that's crazy, too, that we talk about all the time is like, I'll see a rapper post a picture or go on Instagram live and I know exactly what studio it is because we've been to all the studios. So it's like, it's like shit like that. Sometimes you're not even thinking about, but you never know who's plotting on you type shit like that. So it's just like, you just got to move smart. I don't lie, that's a little nice flex the nigga threw in there. He said, we've been to all the studios. <laughs> <I'm exactly laughs> yeah. Not even just me though. All artists, like you ask, you show another producer this or another artist, this, they're going to know. You know what I mean? Or just regular people who've been to studios, who've been around, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, they're mm-hmm. going to know certain areas. So you just got to move smart of, like, what you're doing, really. Like, I got taught that when I was young around these guys, just, like, knowing what to do, really, not, like, posting everything. Man, it's crazy that you're 22, bro, because, like, nigga, you still got, like, 30 so years yeah. of just straight killing yeah, shit, you feel me? Like, Even when I was thinking that, I was like, yo, what's the span? What's the, like, lifespan of, like, a producer, like, in the game? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why have you seen, like, Zaytoven still producing shit? No cats. Will a Fool just produce mad shit on, um, who was it, Rod Waves? Um, album so I was just like you, you could keep doing this shit forever like you just stay on top Mike Dean he be on all types of records and he's older too so it's just like let's talk about this you young but you already on the business wave you already doing real estate you 22 years old so let's talk about how you got into that I feel like that's more like my family like the business oriented and shit mm-hmm. so they'll be like, like that. yeah they'll be like, like so I was like when I got my check I wasn't spending it right away it's like I had the knowledge of like okay maybe if I in- invest my money into this it's like it's pre-construction house. Like when it gets made, it's worth this. Now I could just flip it. You know what I'm trying to say? Without just getting the bag right away and spending it on myself. I was trying to make more money first till I get comfortable, have money coming in before I spent on all that shit. That's real simple and that's fire. Yeah. It's like there's like certain things like 
us as producers, we just like looking at people in the music industry, but we're not even seeing our resources. Like with all these real estate agents, there's like people who's ready to talk to you. Just go and chill with them and talk to them too. It's just like different ways of making money, really. So you, so you saying go ahead, no matter how young you are, don't spend the money. Go ahead, grab the asset, and make uh, the asset make you money. That's what I think. Yeah, I tell you, cause we, we young, bro. It's just like, like I'd rather be thirty and chilling, like rather than right now just trying to flex on everyone type shit, and then you just crash out like later. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I'd rather be like thirty and I have mad shit. I've, you know what I'm trying to say? Like or like put up the money when I'm 18, 19, and when I'm 25, I, I don't even got to worry too much if I'm like, or if I got, like, you know what I mean? If I'm going to run out of money, I'd rather just put it up first. But you're going to get hate too from people like saying like, oh, you're producing all these songs. Like, where's all this? Where's all that? But like, you just got to tune that shit up and just like, wait till you get like to a certain point where you like financially ready. We don't just like spend your last dollar on some shit. You know what I'm trying to say? So you're doing real estate, you're producing. You in the motion, and then you ain't got down. This nigga about to tour United States in, the, in six <laughs> days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talk about like time management. And niggas think like producers like just sitting in the cribs and making beats. Like, nah, man, we busy as hell. Busy, bro. bro. And I was just talking to, um, you guys know Brandon Finessin? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we were just with him. I was just with him and Philly. And he was just telling me, bro, he's like, bro, I was with Uzi for the last two years. He's telling me, he's like, he's like, this is the last two weeks I finally had, like, just chilling by myself. You know what I mean? And I was talking to him, like, bro, this shit's crazy because I, I haven't had in the last five days, like, no time to make beats. We'll be going to this place. We're going to this place. Okay, we're going to this restaurant. Or we're going to this meet and greet. Oh, someone needs this. Like, you're always just getting up. You're going Because you're with an artist, bro. These guys, like, these guys got mad shit they got to get done. You know what I mean? So, it's like, that's the hard part when I'm on road with, bro. Like, it's like making time to make music. Because he be always on the go. His album just came out. He has all this press release, all this type of shit. So, if he wants me to come with him, it's hard. But that's why I just keep my speaker with me, like, I just got that computer, my Beats Pill speaker, and I just like. But we are, we already know Beats Pill. Who proven the Beats Pill? Um, um, Team Idiot. Team Idiot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's where I got the idea from. <laughs> when I when I heard him say that, I was like, "Facts, I don't even need a big studio. I just need this little speaker right here. I'm good." Yeah, nah. Or yeah. some headphones. Pill definitely buzzing. They got the big one, right? Well, every yeah. producer I know, they got the little JBL. JBL, like JBL, that, facts. Going crazy with it, bro. I remember seeing Tarantino with the big Beats. The big yeah. pill, like the huge one. The huge one, yeah. Handling it. Yeah, Travel. Yeah. So how important is it to have like a personal relationship with the artist? I think that's the main thing. I was like, that's because I, I, I see producers who just start making beats, but they have a personal relationship with the artist and they're getting placements right away. Because mm-hmm. they just learn how to do it like in one year. But like for someone else who's like building, trying to get relationship, it takes them a while. You know what I mean? We just sending beats out. But when you start building that personal relationship, I think that shit takes you far, bro. Because, like, you could just hit them, like, yo, where you at? Oh, we're going to go eat. You go eat. You go to the studio. Oh, pull up some beats. It's not even, like, you know that they're not going to do no weird shit. You could trust them. So I feel like that's, like, one of the main things in the business. Like, for sure, you got to have hard beats. But personal relationship, I think, is, like, one of, like, the main things for sure. So, like, give me a blueprint. Like, I'm a producer. I've just been producing for a year. And I just met JB. He an artist. He got some type of motion, like he got like, you know what I'm saying, like you know, hundred thousand views. Yeah, hundred thousand views. Or you're on a song or something yeah. like that. Like, what, 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 what would we, what, what should we be doing, like to, you know, push the brand right now? For an artist or a producer? Like both of us. Both. Just, so yeah, as an together. artist. Yeah. What should you guys be doing? Um, I think just keep dropping content. Like I feel like some artists they drop a song, and then they be waiting like five months to drop the next song. But I feel like I feel like you got to just stay consistent with this shit, like. Drop like, especially nowadays, bro. A song can just get picked up off on TikTok. Like, a song can just get picked up on Spotify. People are gonna listen to it. Like, it's so easy now to drop music. It's not like, like, 1990s. We gotta go to the store and make make a CD and give it to them. You know what I'm trying to say? You could just drop the shit right on your distro kid tune core. You feel me? So I feel like just staying consistent is the main thing, and just showing people like, like who you are. Really, just showing people who you are. But I feel like music is the main thing, and just staying in the studio. Just working. Like people get that shit messed up. They they be looking at everything else, but it's like the music's number one. Like if the music's good, like the shit's gonna go. For sure. Make sure you drop that shit, man. Show them who you are. And, and, and don't and, and artists don't be scared to get beats from the good producers, bro. Like they be just trying to get some free beats from random producer, but like you can invest in the invest in the producer too. You know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, you know how that go. Yeah. For sure. 
<laughs> I, I hate artists that be fire hell. They drop every six months, bro. They're like my biggest yeah. baby, bro. You like what you doing, bro? Be like, shit, chilling. And even artists staying with the producer they started with too. That's a big thing because they be like making the hits that you know what I'm trying to say, like that make them go up. But then sometimes they try to switch their sound or like go to another. Follow producer. somebody else. Follow, sound, follow someone yeah. else sound or this, but like that's when when you guys were working together, that shit's gonna go up. I feel like that's the main thing too. <laughs> but who who we talking? Who did the interview with? They were throwing shots on that bit. They were like, "Bro, you gotta stick with your producer, bro." On oh, God, it's a couple it artists like though that, that we know that just they first album crazy, and then they just switched the producer, yeah. and it's like. But I see you guys even posted. Um, I forgot what you guys posted, but I see Metro said they're always gonna come back around. Like one thing, yeah. I think I think you, you guys posted that. that. Yeah, he he commented on you guys. I'm pretty sure it was your guys post. He commented like, Metro. "What? Yeah, Metro." He's like. It's like one thing is they always gonna come back around though, and that's facts. So like every artist who I work with was like, we started together or some shit like that. Like no matter what, if you're gonna keep working as a producer, like, they're gonna come back around to your sound. If you hard, you hard, bro. Like same. Like, then they're gonna re- remember like, oh, this guy produced this hit for me in the beginning. Like, oh, we need his sauce now. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna really re- realize like some shit's not working. You know what I mean? So what other like personal relationships do you have with artists? Like what's some other artists? Um, I feel like Nav's like the the main one because that's my boy. Like I'm with him, but I feel like Lil got it too. Like that's my boy. Rest in peace, Key. I had a, I had a relationship with him too. Mm. I feel like why I feel like why so like not on some crazy personal type shit, but like I feel like we got it. Like I was Facetiming him, talking to him all the time. But like even with Thug and Gunna, like when I seen him, it would be like cool. You know what I mean? But even some someone like me is like right when I meet someone, I'm not gonna go and try to like right away be like trying to joke too much with him or because you don't even know you got to feel him out for a little bit. You know what I'm trying to say? Let them know you and let them see that you're real before you do all that type of shit, like all the extra shit or Snapchatting them. And you know what I'm trying to say? Like, so it's just like, I feel like I was in the process of that really just right now, building more and more connections with other artists. You feel me? Like, that's it. Because I'm going outside more. Even like producers like Wheezy and shit like that. Like just checking up on them, seeing if they're good, really. Don't even need anything from them. Like, just say, yo, you good, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just chilling where you at. Type shit like that. Free YSL, man. Free YSL. Free the whole game. Fuck out, man. I'm God. Free YSL. They trying, they doing Atlanta dirty right now, bro. Facts. Shit, crazy. Freedom boys. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Goats. What's the three artists like you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Drake. Yes, sir. I feel like Drake is on everybody for this. Yeah, Drake for sure. Drake. Especially because he's from the city. And future, future. Um, but I, I got some shit with Future. Um, Taurus played me some shit actually the, last week that me and me and him did on the beat. But it's just like you gotta you gotta wait till the shit comes out. It's like him, Drake, Future, even Saw Baby. I fuck with Saw Baby. Yeah, Saw Baby. He go crazy. He ain't gonna he, he got so, he's like, super unique. Saw Baby, bro. Not 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 on some shit <laughs> where it's nigga, like like it's my, like Travis Scott. Obviously, you're gonna name the everyone's gonna name the main ones. Drake, Travis Scott. This Lil, nigga told Sal, baby, yeah, out of all the artists, he's nah, back. Dr- Drake, Travis Scott, Lil Baby, everyone's gonna choose those. But like, I'm talking about like the underground artist Sal Baby's he fire, sliding, bro. bro. Sal Why Baby you slide, fire. Why he slide? That shit, bro. I haven't heard Sal Baby. Sal Baby, fire, say Sal bro. Baby in a minute. He but hard. he just dropped Steve. something like last year or something like that. Yeah, he dropped some shit last last year. Last year, yeah. Still, Ooh, man. That shit fire. Right? Okay. Shit fire. Nah, that shit older though. But like his but new got, tape's hard, yeah. bro. I don't sleep yeah, good. Yeah, 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 he's he hard, got, bro. He be dropping hella shit. He be dropping hella shit. Song by the name. Nah, Who bro. He's hard, bro. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's all it's all. That's you, you, know, you know everyone's going to name the, the three future Drake weekend. Everyone's going to name that type of shit. But like artists that are like, who I just like fuck with underground, Saw Baby for sure. He's hard, bro. Saw Baby. All right, Saw Baby, you listening, bro. You, you done got your one, man. Uh, fuck with the kid, man. You feel me? Yeah, yeah Barnacles. He dropped Barnacles 2020, then Do It For Demons. Do It For Demons, one. hard too. Yeah. You been listening to Baby too? Yeah, I feel like he got a very, very... His shit is like an image he be painting, for real. That's what it Kind of like on some his, anime his, shit. Yeah, kinda, anime. His bars be crazy, too. Like, if you listen to this shit, he's saying he's crazy. So I'm just asleep. I'm sleeping on the way. Yeah, you got to just which, have some fun. Like, which underground artists you guys, like, be typed in with, like? Yeah, I just... I be always trying to know right that, now. like, which, which artists with. you guys fuck with. I ain't gonna lie, it's just one dude, bro. It name um I don't even know how to say dude name Akachi put me on well you know Akachi Akachi yeah for sure uh, he worked with these artists I'm fucking C4Y this nigga crazy oh, bro okay. 
Akachi got like three, four projects with him already. Like they just. I think I seen Akachi post it too. Bro, they crazy, bro. C four Y. They is crazy. I fuck with V's. V's, yeah. You know V's. My boy, uh, I like PZ from out there. PZ, yeah. I got another no, artist. Some shit with PZ. PZ yeah. Bimmer. PZ. PZ Bimmer. I fuck with the new Atlanta way. City Hendrix. Up, bro. You fuck with City? Like Trail. 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 Yeah. 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 I fuck yeah. with Baby Drill music. Yeah. Baby yeah. Drill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Inside that, the Minutes. You Inside the Minutes. Yeah, you got, uh. That's why it's like when you ask, like, three artists you, you work with, like, I want to see people, like, saying, like, the underground artists, like people don't even know. Seti Hendrix, you feel me? Seti Hendrix. He's oh, Seti like, Hendrix, he's, he's yeah, fire. Yeah. Now. He yeah. hard, bro. Like that's what that's the artist I'm trying to work with too. Is like the people who are gonna be the next stars. Feel me? Everyone wants to work with Lil Baby, Future Drake. Everyone wants to. Work, everyone knows that you want to work with them, gonna. But it's like it's the other artists like I'm trying to tap in with too, like the under um upcoming artists. You know what I mean? So let's get into like the beat making process, like. Amy, like, you know what I'm saying? What's, what's some VSTs you fucking with? Omnisphere. I fuck with Omnisphere. Um, I heard of the Sonic. You got the Sonic extensions? Extensions? No, what? Y'all ain't heard of that shit? Sonic bro? extensions? All right, so Omnisphere got, I mean, you know how this like preset bank shit yeah. vibe, but Omnisphere got, if you go to their own website, they got Sonic extensions or expansions or whatever, and it's like bank. So it's like, it's basically like another keyscape of Trillion. Hi. So they got Nylon Sky, Unclean Machine. They got like two other banks. No way. When they dropped that? Oh, like Stylus? It's been out for a while, but I just brought Nylon Sky, Unclean Machine, and it's like basically two extra Omnisphere with a whole bunch of sounds. And the guitars are like the best guitars. Like, they're better than Contact. And the Unclean Machines, that's just nasty. And it just goes to your Omnisphere? Huh? Like, it just goes onto your Omnisphere? Yeah, you install it and it's in your Omnisphere. And it's like, you know, like, you know how Keyscape and Trillion is in your Omnisphere? It's like that. It's in your Omnisphere, bro. That's hard. That Nexus, people be sleeping, bro. Like Nexus, oh, which ne- one? Nexus, like even, bro. If you if you use the old sounds of Nexus and you add like new effects to the shit, should be hard, bro. You just gotta you just gotta tweak the sound, bro. I it's got really, Nexus three. Not really. That really f- even contact, contact's hard. Yeah, it's yeah, hive, sure. like, of course. There's Hive. Yeah. Um, uh, SRX keyboards. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Those oh, yeah. The, those like strings. Oh, you already like, on Diva. Diva, yeah. yeah okay. Like that shit. That shit's hard. But like. Don't sleep on the old shit too, cause if you if you tweak, like now I know how to like tweak sounds and like add effects, chains like portal. There's like portal effect tricks, all this shit. I mean, some shit sound hard. Give us like a, a secret effects effects VST that you use. Oh, is that like portal? I say portal. portal That's yeah. your main portal. weapon. It'd be like portal. If you like portal, you heard of fragments. Fragment sounds familiar. Yeah, fragment. It's like portal 2.0. Yeah, fragment sounds really familiar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like run me through the mixing process. Producers want us to ask this, man. But run us through like your mixing process. Bro, really just leveling. <laughs> That's it. Leveling, bro. Like, <laughs> and just even, level. like, even like bro, I was putting I was putting a soft clip or two on my on my master and shit like that. But like I'll be seeing producers don't even like I then I don't even put it on some days. Then I see I ask always producer, like, you put one on or you don't put one on, but like I just do that to by ear too. Like I'll put like a soft clip yeah, on. Yeah, you might, you might. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like if the if it's like if it's clipping like crazy, like I'll put a soft clip on it. Yeah, yeah I use the T Rex. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I think it just so, super depends because my my levels be so good to where it's just not I'm a God. crunch. If I'm you're God. not crunching, they're not putting that. Clip I've seen on a it. lot of producers, a whole bunch of different. Like my boy Kilo, we be making beats, bro. We got down, highlight everything in the mixer, turn the speakers all the way up. And then turn everything down. Yeah. Hundred million kilo. Shit. Yeah. And you ugly kilo. The, <laughs> 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 but they got their limited. But he got the best mixers out the team, though. You yeah. feel me? So it's just like kilo. everybody got their own process. You know what I'm saying? Just when you're with an artist, though, like that's when it's like when an artist just wants you to pull it up. You can't even mix it, right? Then you just gotta like you, can't you just gotta have it leveled and it sounds hard and just send okay. it over. Make that beat in ten minutes. They want it right then. You can't even mix it crazy. Alright, so we got this segment called overrated, underrated. We give you a topic and then you say what it is and why. I ain't gonna lie, we ain't write no notes, so this shit gonna be straight off right, the dome with it. Overrated, underrated, Toronto food. Underrated. For real, y'all? Fire. Fire. All right, so you gotta convince me, because I know I got some friends from Canada. They be saying some dumb ass Nah, <laughs> Every, everyone who pulls up to Toronto says, yo, Toronto got the best, like, the best food because it got... Toronto is like, what's it? What's the word? Um, Like, mad diversity. Like, mm-hmm. oh. Indian people, Chinese people, um, African, Jamaicans. Somalian, so it's like, you know, you can get the, f- it's not like the popular food, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, the actual food spots where it's like, they're making Jamaican food that's like, 
you know, from the Jamaicans that, you know, make it okay. crazy. I heard it. You know what I'm trying to say? Soul the, the, food. Jamaican food. Soul food, crazy. like, or like Indian food. Like, you pull up there, like, you're going to get the shit that's like real. You know what I'm trying to say? Not like the watered down. You, know, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like underrated. Uh, you, you ate Atlanta food, right? A, a waffle House. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna go. To, we're gonna go to. Uh, what, what's it called? Copper uh, Cove. Copper Cove. Yeah, we're going oh, to that be, tonight. Oh, he and Bucket. You know, yeah, you know we're going, going to that tonight. What's Copper Cove? I, I don't know. That, it's a restaurant. Yeah, it's a restaurant. Yeah, it's a restaurant. Got down. Uh, I don't know. Like, I seafood, never even seafood ate it. There. Yeah. So, I don't even know. What you Waffle House? What What you think about that? For two a.m. Trim. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> oh I swear, God. bro. I eat that shit. I I fuck with Waffle it. Waffle House is going crazy, yeah. though. I always say like, I'd be like, hey, bro, I hop or Waffle House, bro. If you say no. I hop, I'm gonna get no, no, nah, Waffle nah, House, nigga. Nah, Waffle House, nigga. House way, Waffle House, Waffle House, way better. Nigga. Waffle House, way no, better, bro. bro. Don't get me wrong. You tell me, bro, I, I go to Waffle House all the time, bro. But if there's an IHOP open, nah, you go to IHOP. Nah, what? Nah, what? Nah, what? Nah, what you get from nah. Waffle House? Oh nah. my God. What you get from Waffle House? You tell me an All Star? What? What? IHOP is killing the All Star? Bro, hey, cancel the All Star. Cancel JB, bro. <laughs> JB gotta get canceled. Bro. That nigga, well, you wait gotta get, get canceled. Wait till we get this on. You gotta get real. You gotta get this on. Wait till we get this on. Waffle House or if you've been in you the, the IHOP, right? Side, yeah, for sure. You say, you say a Waffle House? Bro, Waffle, Waffle House. House is like this compared to yeah, IHOP, bro. Come oh, on, we're back. tweaking. IHOP is like microwave. <laughs> Waffle House got blueberry, <laughs> chocolate chip, and regular waffles, bro. IHOP got pancakes, bro. Yeah, but you don't need okay, all that. Okay, but bro, you, you, don't, need, you don't need all, all that. You just need... IHOP gonna fuck your stomach up fast in the Waffle House, first of all. <laughs> Them eggs, them sausages, that shit ain't whipped up right there. Oh, Look, bro. Waffle House got niggas fresh out of jail whipping this shit up <laughs> for real. Oh, this shit bro. greasy. This shit right here. I can't, face bro, I can't believe you said that shit. This man said Waffle House. We in House Atlanta. You, IHOP, come on, we in Atlanta, bro. bro I'm going straight. To, if I'll go, but I always go to Waffle House. Bro. I swear, Waffle you House is mean? known for like Atlanta's known for Waffle House. That's what I'm saying. That uh, that shit. Yeah. Sorry, I. Uh, Five. Damn. Got some big ass in that bag, my boy. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Hey, had the wings yet, bro? No. Uh, bro, I'm vegetarian, bro. I'm okay, vegetarian. Bit. Oh, for real? Yeah. So, at Waffle House, I just got like the waffles, the hash browns. What's the place toast. you took me to in LA, bro? Cafe Gratitude? Oh, it was a vegan. Fire. You been you been there? Yeah, come that's on now. Yeah, that's they, fire. You get that French. They got French toast. Yeah. They go crazy. They got that's one of my. Shit. Th- that, that's like one of the best vegan spots I ever ate. Come on, see, you know what I'm saying? He don't know what's going yeah. on. Well, you didn't like it. He ain't like it. They had me eat like a tree bark sandwich. No. <laughs> <laughs> he had some. What was that? A sandwich? It was like what the fuck was, bro? I was like, they gave me some organic ketchup, nigga. This shit yeah. was like. I eat nah, you're tripping, melted bro. a red Crayola. Uh. Oh yeah, oh that shit tastes like tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, the vegan ketchup that shit is tomatoes. How important is it to like stay healthy, especially when you're moving around? Like, you ain't got time to cook. Nah, nah, nah. That's important, especially if you're with artists and you guys drinking and going out late. You waking up four hours of sleep, three hours of sleep. Waking up, going here, moving around, flights. Like that shit's important. That's why it's like when I'm on road, it's like it's hard. That's why when I get back home, I try to like go to the gym, eat properly. Don't try to even eat food outside. Make some home cooked meals, shit like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's mad important. I feel like it makes you think right too mm-hmm. when you're creating. Like it makes you in a good mind space. Like you happy, you positive. So you're not getting sleep type shit like that. No, you're negative. Right, so. Okay, so look, overrated, underrated. All nighters, because I know some sometimes niggas be standing for three days or four days. Like, do nah. you be on it? Nah, I don't. I don't do that. I I I've been in up in the studio like one day. Like, we'll we'll be in the studio till like nine a.m. Like I've done sessions like those for sure. Like we in the studio till ten a.m. But then I'll go to sleep till seven p.m. You know for what I'm saying? Like, damn, some, I ain't gonna lie. We haven't get right back up three hours, four hours. I'm saying y'all do that shit like scooter. You three hundred dB. Y'all niggas be up for like two days straight, bro. Everybody know me, bro. I be going to bed. Nah, t- ten a.m. Ten a.m. Like ten a.m. Maybe wake up at four, three. Wow. Yeah. Damn, we we never crazy. did no like like stay up three days in the For studio, it? work, 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 work. Like we've probably done like a day. We'll just stay in the studio, you know what I mean? So you need up. that mental health, that mental yeah. clarity. Yeah, and then we just go back and everyone resets and pull up everyone's positive, you know what I'm trying to say? And like back to work. Okay. So everyone's right. Everyone gets right. All right, shower up and pull back up. That's okay. what we usually do. Alright, so boom. Overrated, underrated, leaking songs. Nah, that's that's dead. It's dead. It's dead. Nah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Ain't gonna count, man. Nah, that's that. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with that shit. Why? Right, Cause it could, it fucked your shit up before. Yeah, like I oh. like two songs really just dropped right now, unreleased song Nav and Young Thug and uh, Nav and Gunna song that I produce, and it's like even though the song I probably it probably wouldn't ever come out, it's just some shit where it's just like I'd rather it come out in a different way. Wait, just like a, I gotta think about this shit though. So what? What's why when the song get leaked they don't drop it? Um, because they probably just don't want it under like, like they, they under, want to like, keep it quiet. Like, like no, no, I don't think they. I just don't think that they think it's hard enough like to put on there like. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, drop it as a release. Like, that's what I think it is, really. I don't know, though. Cause, uh, it wouldn't be surprised. Mad it songs be surprised. leaking, though, bro. Like, like eight songs of Young Thug will just leak in a day. It's like, they're not going to put the eight songs on their leg. Like, Ain't gonna lie, that is kind of fucked up. Because I be on YouTube, and bro, if you play like an unreleased song, it would be a whole, whole playlist. You probably playlist. hear like a hundred Young Thug. I'd be like, where is all this coming from? Bro, I just followed an Instagram page called like Rap Leaks or some shit. And it's like every single day, there's like nine new songs of Where's everyone. Loaded? Juice World. Lil Baby, this. They be stealing somebody's hard drive. I think they stole yeah. somebody's hard drive, No, I don't bro. think... I, it's like, they, they like, hacking emails. And emails? Hacking emails, and they put it on a website for people to buy it. And then, you know, all the fans, like, pitching 100 bucks. That's what I seen for Nav's music. Damn, they'll, they'll, like, they yeah, bro, it? yeah, they'll sell, like, a song, like, for 5000 So that all the fans will come together, like, yo, 100, 100, 100, 100. They'll get, get the song for, like, 5000 And then just give out a link? Up? Yeah. Oh my god, it's a dirty game. But who yeah. we talk about a sunny interview with Uzi? We got them tipped and they got the staircase. Oh, the bro, Uzi, remember, remember Uzi found the hacker? Yeah, found the hacker. <laughs> yeah. Bro, if one of these artists see the hacker, I know, I know who that is, too, bro. I ain't gonna say that. I know who that is. <laughs> bro, if an artist sees someone who's leaking their songs, bro, they're getting their ass beat, bro. Especially even if you're even a producer, bro. Oh, yeah. Like, that's fucking up your bag, too. If you think about it, like, fucking up everything, really. Tripping. Uh, that's facts though That's facts You'd rather just like If you're gonna leak a song I, I, I would say like Just holler at the artist And be like Yo let me drop this On my SoundCloud Like type shit If you're a producer Like let me drop my This shit right Real quick on my SoundCloud Yeah yeah That's facts I ain't gonna count That's, That shit funny as hell That little video man That shit Man We can't even add this shit To the podcast <laughs> It's all good Alright so you did What four You said on new, five, now? five Five yeah Bro, like, you're like an executive producer at this point. Yeah. Okay? You feel me? I just be like, just be working with bro. That's it. Just because we locked in, we family. What's I'm your trying. favorite song that you done did with him? On oh, Forever? Like, that's... that's. I ain't talking no, about like the biggest song, but the song no, is no, like... No debate. No debate. For sure. No, no debate for sure. And then there's one, um, Run It Up with Pop Smoke. Mm -hmm. And that was like, like oh. four days before he passed away, bro. And it's like, on our schedule, it said... It was like Sunday. I, I forgot what day he passed away, but it was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Like, Nav, Pop, Pop Smoke, we were going to be locked in for three days. And the, the night before, he just passed away, bro. And shit was crazy. Rest in peace, Pop Smoke. It's that LA shit, man. That shit crazy. LA, bro. facts. I even LA, bro. Just the, just the vibe, just the world, Jeez. period. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit ain't it, bro. All right, so to wrap up the interview, like, any other advice you want to give to producers or anything? Um, just stay consistent, stay working. For real, that's it. That's the only um advice I'll give the producer. Just stay working and stay consistent and keep doing it. Now, I do have this last producer question I forgot about. Um, I had asked, this is a little sample maker chat, and I asked them what's some good questions. And my boy Luizzi said, what's your message to a producer that feels like they're stagnant or just don't know what to do next, even after believing they created a, a solid foundation? They just keep dropping content. Keep, keep finding more and more ways to, like, Push your shit out. Like, same thing that you're saying, like, putting out vlogs, doing something different outside of your comfort zone, really. That's, like, one thing I'm trying to start doing now, like, do stuff outside of my comfort zone, like, do interviews. Because people don't even really know, like, I be around all this shit, but not even people don't even know my face. You feel me? Or, like, my name really like that. So it's just, like, doing shit out of your comfort zone to show people, like, and making this shit fun again. You feel me? And just doing this shit for fun. Like, Obviously, be serious about it and you want to make money, but do it for fun, too, like, because you love music. That's it, really. I feel like when I was, like, stressing about when the next song's going to come out, this and that, and when it comes out, then I'm like, oh, why am I even stressing? So, like, now I'm just trying to put in work and just, like, like just keep a calm mind, too, at the same time. You feel me? That's facts, man. Well, there you go, man. Another episode of the podcast. Now, everybody get in the comments and tell Money Music do the cook-up, bro. You know for sure, saying? for sure. On the way. Our cook-ups be going crazy, way. bro. Like, we gotta do one. Every one, it was over 100,000 views. No way. Man. Yeah, yeah, you gotta we tell gotta me. We gotta do one. We gotta do they one. They twisted at like, twisted at half a, mi uh, half a million. Uh, you no way. Million. 
Damn. Oh, uh, who else? That's like all of them. Ones. Like they all, some of them, like three hundred k, two hundred k. Cook was going crazy, man. Shout out DB, man. DB two hundred k. Sure. Okay. You feel me? But yeah, that's a wrap, man. Appreciate you for all tapping right. in with appreciate us. Appreciate you guys, bro. Yeah, yeah. Ready now, gang. Yeah. yeah.